Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Adam Cellini. Topping our news tonight, some new developments in the search for a plane that crashed into the Western Pacific last month, killing three sailors, one of whom lived in our area. The U.S. Navy says it will deploy deep water salvage experts to search for that craft. Lieutenant Stephen Combs Jr. was in that crash. He lived in Lakewood Ranch between deployments with his family in the area. Also among the missing um, sailors, Airman Apprentice Brian Gross also also of Florida and Airman Matthew Calastri of Louisiana. The aircraft was traveling to the USS Ronald Reagan when it crashed the day before Thanksgiving in the Philippine Sea. Eight people were rescued from that accident. Multiple law enforcement agencies are searching the area tonight for a missing member of the force. Charlotte County Sheriff K-9 Edo was discovered missing from a kennel Around 8 o'clock last night, he went missing in the area of Cranberry Avenue and Tamiami Trail, which is right on the Sarasota and Charlotte County lines. That's also why officers with the Northport Police Department and more than a dozen volunteer service aides have also joined that search since last night. The Charlotte County Sheriff's Office says Ito is very approachable and friendly, but if you see him, you are asked to call the number listed on your screen as soon as possible. That number is 941-639-0013. Well, one holiday stereotype is waking up Christmas morning to find a puppy under the tree, but animal rescue agencies are taking action so that their animals aren't returned after the excitement of the holidays wears off. ABC 7's Erica Jackson has more on why or excuse me, how organizations are looking into their potential adopters. Two year old Hank is all bark and no bite. He and his brother Ace are both blind, but they're inseparable and need to find their forever home together. Danny Robbins already has four rescue pups and hopes one family will take the plunge and bring home the dogs. They'll provide you the love that you need, the companionship that you need here. It's absolutely amazing. Going from having no home to having a home and having a family and, you know, really knowing that we've made an improvement to their life is pretty exciting. Karen Slumba with Nate's Honor Animal Rescue says many more families come out looking for a pet around the holidays, but only 8% of its adoptions in 2016 took place in December. Nate's is vigilant with screening potential adopters, so the rescued animals aren't returned within the upcoming months. There's a lot of red flags that we look for to make sure that people are going to be the appropriate home for the dogs and cats. Nate's makes sure pets are going home with owners that will spend time with the animal. They say questions about declawing cats are also a red flag. And Nate's wants owners of new puppies to train the dogs appropriately. If they're not trained as a puppy, they're going to be crazy, um, very uh, ill-behaved dogs. So it's kind of like not raising your kid properly and having unruly teenagers. Slumba fears many families with kids are interested in adopting an animal for the novelty around the holidays and suggest doing research before heading out to the ranch. This is not something that is going to be um, with you for a week. This is going to be something that can be with you for 18 years. Robbins hopes families that are ready for their new four-legged addition will choose to rescue since some dogs like Linda have been living at the ranch for more than two years. He says his rescue dog, Shadow, has changed his family forever. The love that he provides for my two daughters and the protection that he has for the house is just absolutely amazing. Much Erica and now Nate's does have holiday spirit and they are working to make sure you have that picture perfect Christmas. They have a limited number of puppies available for adoption, but they can be delivered to your house by in time for uh, that magical uh, St. Nicholas delivery on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning. And we'll have more information on that offer on our website, mysuncoast.com. Well, in other news, as we inch closer to those holidays, more and more of those holiday lights will be popping up. They twinkle, they make the whole neighborhood bright, but they can, of course, also be a fire hazard. According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, every year, hundreds of candle and tree-related fires do happen, costing nearly $60 million in property damage. We get caught up with so many things that we forget some very basic safety reminders. 
Now to protect your home and your family, here are a few safety tips. Make sure those outdoor lights are made to handle the elements. Keep trees away from heat sources, and if it's a fake tree, make sure it is flame resistant. Now I'll bet some of you were searching for heat sources today. Kind of a chilly day, but nice, I thought. Let's head over to Steve Newman in for Wendy Ross for a first check on our first alert weather, Steve. Yeah, Adam, I know you like it cool, but a little chilly for some of us. And those chilly north winds have been blowing all day with clear skies right across the heart of Florida, little clouds over the water, and our winds are going to slacken off. So it might not feel as cold from the wind chill, but the temperature itself is going to drop tonight. There's a wind, show, wind forecast for tonight. And considerably lighter now than it was this time yesterday, but overnight the winds are going to become virtually calm. Now, calm winds, clear skies and dry air sets the stage for the temperatures to drop like a stone for the rest of this evening and tonight. And here is the dry air. Dew point temperature readings in the 20s and 30s all across Florida. It's going to be a freeze up in the northern part of the state and frost uh, in other areas too. And look at the uh, dew points right across the sun coast in the 30s just about everywhere. So these are forecast low temperatures we're predicting tonight as low as 30 36 of Bartow, Wachula 37, low 40s right along the immediate coast, but just go a few miles inland, you'll be close to 40 or even a little bit lower than that. So here's your evening planner showing temperatures dropping gradually to about 43 by 5 a.m., close to 40 by dawn. Coming up in a few minutes, I'll tell you when it might eventually get warmer, Adam. All right, thank you, Steve. Well, in the wake of President Trump's announcement declaring U.S. support to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and move the U.S. embassy, some locals are expressing their own thoughts. A group of protesters circling around Five Points Park in downtown Sarasota today, <clears throat> excuse me, waving signs and chanting, hoping to get their message across that that action might be igniting violence between Palestinian and Israeli forces. But the decision comes amid some, amidst some uh, mixed reactions from those here on the Sun Coast. At a separate event at the Al Katz Center for Jewish Learning in Bradenton today, people are actually celebrating the decision. We are also celebrating the acknowledgement by the United States of America for the first time in history that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. That is a major important event to those of us who love Israel. The move comes as a fulfilled campaign promise for President Trump, but as Palestinian Liberation Organization Secretary General uh, says the announcement makes a two-state solution impossible and is sparking clashes around the world. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley speaking to CNN on that matter today, insisting the move will help the peace process. For 22 years, you have had presidents and the American people ask for the embassy to be moved. And no president, not, not Clinton, not Bush, not Obama, actually made, had the courage to make that move and listen to the will of the American people. The Senate just overwhelmingly again um, voted to have the embassy moved. So the president did the will of the people. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, not surprisingly praised that announcement. Well, one person is recovering from a gunshot wound after an argument turned violent here in the area. The Manatee County Sheriff's Office responding to 39th Avenue West in Bradenton around 10 o'clock last night. That's where detectives say two people were fighting when one pulled out a handgun. During the struggle, one of the two uh, ended up getting shot. That person has since been taken to the hospital and no arrest has been made uh, yet uh, pending an investigation into that incident. Well, the Venice Police Department is also investigating after a vehicle crashed into a Venice hospital on Saturday. First responders say a man traveling north on Tamiami Trail lost control of his car, jumped the median, and slammed into Venice Regional Bayfront Health. The driver was the only person inside the car. First responders pulled him from the vehicle, and he was taken inside the facility for further evaluation. Well, still to come here on ABC 7 after an amazing state championship win from Venice High School on Saturday, Indians quarterback Bryce Carpenter will be joining us in the studio to talk about the victory and what it means for the team. That's all coming up after the break. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. 
Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to mesobook.com. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. Hello, I'm Stephanie Webb. And I'm Ray Collins. The man found guilty in the death of a four-year-old girl is set to be sentenced in Charlotte County. We're going to tell you more about Keith Wilson and the dramatic case that goes back nearly two decades, Monday on Good Morning Suncoast. Wendy? And after a turbulent start to the weekend, we're going to have a very different Monday. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you and for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! Welcome back. We are joined now by Bryce Carpenter, quarterback of the state champion, Venice High School Indians. Uh, Bryce is a senior. He'll be heading to Coastal Carolina next year, uh, as you can see by the Chanticleer gear. He's already rocking here on set. He also scored all four of Venice's touchdowns yesterday. So, Bryce, thanks for joining us, and congratulations. Thank you for having me. No problem. So, first question, wh what have you done the last 24 hours? I mean, how did you celebrate? Um, how did you spend uh, your night after this win? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was a great win for us. You know, it was a great team win. And, uh, you know, I just want to spend it with my teammates and, you know, the guys that, you know, I was able to get there with. Did you go to Disney World? No, did I didn't. ever happen at any point? I'm just saying. It, it was in Orlando. The game was in Orlando. Um, so tell me about this team. How did, how did you guys make it work? Because, I mean, Venice High School has had a lot of really good teams, a lot of really good players. Um, and looking up and down on this roster, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people would have picked this one to win the state championship. What made it work for you guys? You know, we really just played together. We played together as a team. And, uh, you know, really just came together. And, you know, we played for one another. And, you know, we, we just knew that, you know, the person next to them, you know, had each other's back. And you really just molded as a team. And, uh, you know, I think that was our biggest strength, you know, going into the playoffs and just making this state championship run. Now, last year, um, had another successful season. You were the quarterback, and a lot of guys came back this year except Matt LaRoche, the running back, who had a great year last year. What, at what point this season did you feel like, you know, we can, we can do this, we can make a run? You know, we, we knew from, you know, going into the season, you know, that we were going to have a chance to, you know, make that playoff run again and uh, you know, just have a, have a great season. But, um, you know, we really just, you know, came together as a team throughout, you know, the year. And, uh, you know, we had confidence in ourselves and, you know, the coaching staff, you know, they, they you know, got us ready every single week. So, you know, we knew the whole season we had a chance to make it, to make a run for it. And, uh, you know, it, you know, fortunately we were able to do that. Now, speaking of confidence, Coach Peacock uh, told me earlier this year that he thought the IMG game, even though it was your only loss, was a big confidence builder. Uh, why was that? You know, we obviously knew they were an unbelievable team. You know, they had an unbelievable amount of talent on that team. And, you know, we held, you know, toe for toe with them, you know, going into the fourth quarter. So, you know, we knew that we were, you know, we had a pretty special team, you know, after that game that we were able to go out and compete with them. So, um, you know, I think, you know, that, that move to schedule them was, you know, great, you know, great move by Coach Peacock and, uh, you know, really paid off in the end. 
And um, tell me about going into the state game because you guys had to get past the three-time state champion St. Thomas Aquinas at home, but uh, that was a huge hump to get over. So what were the emotions like going in that final game? Uh, overly confident? I mean, how, did you have to try and keep it in check? How'd that work? You know, obviously, you know, that game, that St. Thomas game, you know, it, was a, it was a big emotional game. So we knew that coming back into the state championship that, uh, you know, we had to refocus and, and kind of come back out and, uh, you know, focus back on this Barstrom Trails team because we knew they were a great football team. So, you know, if we were, you know, still thinking about the week before, you know, they could definitely go out there and beat us. But, you know, the coaches did a great job of, you know, getting us focused for this game and um, they were able to go out there and execute. Excellent. Well, uh, Bryce, you, cert you guys certainly executed. You have led that offense all year. You and uh, your favorite target, Javon Hiley, are going to Coastal Carolina next year. So hopefully four more years together. But uh, congratulations on the big win. Thanks for joining us tonight. And it was a chilly night up in Orlando. Another chilly night coming up. Let's head over to Steve Newman for another check on our weather today, Steve. Adam, it was a beautiful day at the beach. It looks like it had been a perfect beach day with the sunshine out there, but with the wind and the cooler temperatures, not so much. It was a great day to get things done around the house or even better inside the house, putting up your Christmas tree if you haven't done it yet, and a beautiful sunset happened just about an hour ago. Current temperatures in the drier air behind that front. It's 49 at Pensacola, 51 at Tampa. Several degrees cooler in many areas now than it was this time last night, which makes me think that our forecast temperatures may be a little optimistic. It could get warmer than we've been predicting or colder tonight than we've been predicting. Across our viewing area, look already 50 in Sarasota. That's several degrees uh, cooler than we were this time last night. 56 at Longboat Key and 52 at Arcadia. And our current conditions of the airport, 50 degrees, dew point 39, and it's going to go lower into the 30s, setting the stage for our temperatures to drop like a stone once the sun goes down. Our last night's low was 42. We could drop two, three, maybe four degrees from that tonight. A high today, 59. You can see how that rates as average for this time of year. Now with the dry air, as you would expect, no rain anywhere within radar range. And by satellite, while it's clear over the uh, land, that cold dry air blowing over the water of the Atlantic and Gulf kind of condenses the moisture above the water into these stratus clouds. And if you were right along the beach looking out over the Gulf tonight, you saw those clouds out there offshore, but it was sunny right on top of you. Now it's going to be cold tonight. Frost warning, a frost advisory as far south as Glades and Hendry County. A lot agriculture goes on down here, but look at this, a hard freeze warning right up to the Georgia border and a freeze warning almost to Tampa Bay. So it is going to be cold tonight, making me think we're going to be maybe two, three, four degrees colder here in our area. It could be snowing. It could be worse as it's snowing across the snow belts in upstate New York. And our future cash shows not only will have that, but a storm, another one blowing out of Canada will bring more snow Monday into Tuesday through the Great Lakes and into the Northeast, but New York City and the highly populated I-95 corridor should escape it. Now let's take a look at the nation's weather, and it's been controlled by a buckle in the jet stream. A polar vortex that swirling low has buckled the jet, bringing that cold air down the Atlantic coast and warm air all the way up the Pacific. That's why it's warm and dry with a high fire danger in California. We'll have high pressure over us for the next couple of days, keeping us dry, and some of that cool air will keep filtering in over us with but two more waves of cooler air this week. Temperatures across the nation right now, 51 at Kansas City, but it's 36 at Raleigh, 37 in New York City. It is warmer at LA though, 83 than it is at Phoenix, with 76 because of the Santa Ana dry winds and the high fire danger. Here's our weather headlines. A few degrees cooler tonight. That means we'll be pretty close to 40 or even a little cooler than that. But fear not, it will be a little warmer briefly by Tuesday. And here's the briefly part. Uh, the future cast showing high pressure building over us. And once it gets a little to the east of us, a little south wind early on Tuesday. Then Tuesday afternoon, a cold front comes through, dries us out, cools us off 10 degrees for Wednesday. So we just can't catch a break here. Here's my forecast for tonight. Clear and cool with our low optimistically 41. We should be 56. And for tomorrow, a mostly sunny and a little bit warmer day, 64 for the high temperature. And here's your seven day outlook showing that that breezy conditions with the front coming through on Tuesday with a high of 72. Then the front comes through. It drops off over 10 degrees, tries to warm up again. Another front Friday night to Saturday morning brings a slight chance of rain overnight. Then I think by next Sunday when it warms up to 77, that sets the stage for warmer weather as we move toward Christmas. And that's your weather story. Adam. Now sports. The Buccaneers at home today hosting the playoff hopeful Detroit Lions at Raymond James Stadium. Matt Stafford making his 109th consecutive start for the Lions despite injuring his throwing hand last week. But it was hard to tell as Stafford completed 81% 
of his 44 passes for 380 yards. That was Darren Fells' uh, catch setting up their first touchdown. Now the Bucks had five turnovers and found themselves in a two touchdown hole late, but Winston finding OJ Howard and that cuts the deficit down to seven. Next drive, first and goal, more play action for the Bucks and check it out. It's left tackle Leonard Wester who's on the receiving end of a game tying touchdown. But the Lions get close enough for a 46 yard field goal try in the final minute and Matt Prater does not disappoint. Bucks lose their third straight ninth of the year. They'll face Atlanta under the lights next Monday night. Well, you saw the nice green grass in Tampa, but check out the scene up in Buffalo today. Here's kicker Adam Vinatieri and the Colts players trying to just carve out some space for a game tying field goal. Yeah, kind of an important play. They were in the middle of a blizzard just from start to finish. You can see some of the crew trying to help here and they were shooed away by the refs. The uh, field goal attempt would be from 43 yards out and uh, as you can see, Vinatieri going to start this one way left, but finds a way to just sneak it in the left upright. Unfortunately, not enough for Indianapolis today. They would end up losing the game to the Bills. Well, a potential shakeup in college basketball. Number two ranked Kansas losing their second straight game today, 95-85 against Arizona State. Trey Holder dropped 29 points for the number 16 Sun Devils in the upset. It is the first time the Jayhawks have lost consecutive games since 2013. Bobby Hurley, you see right there, has led Arizona State to its first 9-0 start since 1974. A day earlier, his alma mater, top-ranked Duke, lost their first game of the year against Boston College. And you know who else is 9-0 this year? The Florida State Seminoles. After a 19-point win today over Tulane, Brian Angola led the Knolls with a 18 points and 8 rebounds. Season-leading scorer Terrence Mann had 12 points. And Florida State's bench outscored the Green Waves uh, bench 33-15. The Knolls are unranked, but that could change. They had a big win earlier this year against in-state rival Florida, who is ranked 5th by the Associated Press. More to come here on ABC7. Stay with us. Let me introduce you to the ultimate Florida window. Do you feel safer with this or this? You'll be proud too. Buy more, save more. Volume discounts on four or more windows. If you're between 50 and 85 years old, call the number on your screen right now for free information on how to save your family thousands of dollars. We're Family Love Plans, and we've been helping families just like yours for over 30 years. The average funeral today can cost up to $10,000 or more, but the most you'll get from government benefits is just $255. How will your family pay the difference? At Family Love Plans, we can help you and your family. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam and your plan can't be canceled. Better still, your rate will never go up and your benefits will never go down. Get your free information about our senior plans. Just answer a few simple questions and receive approval right over the phone. Call 1-800-707-3608. That's 1-800-707-3608. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice, single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Let's get started. Sure.
Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Keep up with the Sun Coast. Watch your favorite ABC7 shows on your streaming device. A professional wrestler who police say was in a car with Swan while he critiqued her performance. She says she asked Swan to stop the car when he began to get angry. When he would not, she jumped out while it was still moving. A witness says Swan followed her out and dragged her back into the car as she was screaming. The WWE says his suspension is indefinite. Well, not so long ago in a movie theater not that far away, the newest Star Wars movie has debuted. The world premiere of The Last Jedi in L.A. featuring a life-size ATM walker, a brigade of uh, stormtroopers, and some guest droids, as you can see there. <laughs> but the star of that event was Luke Skywalker himself, actor Mark Hamill. In a spoiler to uh, nobody saw in uh, 2016's The Force Awakens, rebel hero Luke Skywalker has a prominent role this time around. The Last Jedi features the final on-screen appearance of Carrie Fisher, who uh, died last December after shooting her scenes for the film. The film is dedicated to her memory. It will open nationwide on Friday. And in the front row will be an eager Steve Newman watching. What? A little bit back. It's too close oh, to sorry. the Excuse front row, about halfway back. So I, took, I took a little artistic liberty there, I think, <laughs> just guessing where you might be seated. But any seat's a good seat, right, to watch Absolutely, it? Absolutely, to watch Star Wars. Yep. Got to be there. And uh, the last couple of days have been a good day to go see a movie, but um, you know maybe it'll be cold or rainy. We'll see. No, and it's going to be warmer. Oh, warmer by then. There you go. <laughs>